All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, 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 everybody. How are you doing? Welcome to a new game release stream. I hope you guys are excited. Today is also my final consecutive streaming day of the week. So I hope you're ready for a fun one, full day of streaming as usual. Today is Tuesday, the 12th of October, 2021, and I am Darkseid Phil. I welcome you here to the premiere of Back for Blood. We'll be talking a lot about this in just a moment, of course. So how y'all doing? I hope you've all enjoyed this, this week. It's been a crazy one, right? I mean, this week, so much stuff happened on my streams between Advancement and Alan Wake and the game being haunted, full of bugs and hilarious issues, but also being pretty spooky and full of awesome graphical improvements from the original. <laughs> Playing Far Cry 6. Now nine hours in, absolutely loving the game. Having so much fun with the customizable weapons, the story. The game's pretty fun. I have a tank now I drive around, blow things up with. Pretty damn good, right? The conclusion of Hades. After 37 hours of playing this game, finally seeing the story ending and giving it a proper send-off, right? Returning to games like Lost Judgment and Super Monkey Ball that, quite frankly, have been kind of abused and ignored because I was focused on other stuff and now being able to come back to those full force and focus on them again. It's been a really fun week, seriously. <laughs> I really enjoyed this streaming week quite a lot. It was a very busy one. Um, today will certainly be no exception. Because today is a new game release, ladies and gentlemen. It is the release of Back for Blood. Now, <laughs> a few things to say about Back for Blood. First of all, today it is the spiritual successor to a game that over a decade ago became ultra popular and single-handedly started the zombie craze of video games, Left for Dead. I remember way back in 2008 when I first became a YouTuber and was making consistent videos... Uh, Left 4 Dead revolutionized co-op gameplay on consoles. At that time, there was no really jump-in co-op survival games. In fact, I would argue that Left 4 Dead actually inspired Call of Duty to add a regular zombies mode into their game. And once Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 kind of fell by the wayside, it was Call of Duty that picked up the reins of putting out the yearly annual uh, survival zombie game in their game, you see. <clears throat> but way back when, I just remember having so much fun in Left 4 Dead. Graphics were great. Gameplay was interesting and fun. Jumping in and out of <clears throat> co-op survival <clears throat> with humans all across the globe. Not only in the story-based missions that were quite fun to do over and over and challenge yourself to do them different ways, but also the versus mode which allowed you to control the zombies of various types. It was really well done, in my opinion. Um, it was very unique. A lot of people, you know, were inspired by those games to go out and, and actually create other games, really. Like, that, that's how unique these games were a decade ago, okay? Um, but then what happened? <clears throat> well, everyone copied, right? Everyone tried to make survival co-op games, Um Meanwhile, Turtle Rock went on to do other stuff, like Evolve, which didn't go so well, okay? Evolve was pretty much a ginormous flop, uh, both when it was a new release and then later on they tried to make it free to play, and it just didn't work. It was a, too much of a monetization formula to really be something that was going to uh, be successful. And so here we are many years later, and Turtle Rock Studios kind of going independent, splitting apart, right, from its origins and doing its own spiritual successor to left for dead okay now here's the thing ladies and gentlemen back for blood is free on game pass okay and i played the beta uh about a month and a half ago i want to say it was i can't remember exactly it was it was definitely still in the summertime and when i played the beta <clears throat> it basically left a lot to be desired first of all it barely worked the single player or excuse me I shouldn't have said single player because it's not. The cooperative story mode, which is also known as the campaign mode of the game, didn't even work for the first half of the beta that I played. The servers were screwed up, so you couldn't even check it out. <clears throat> so I ended up trying out the versus mode. And the versus mode, quite frankly, was not as good as the versus mode from back in the day in Left 4 Dead from what I saw. The map was much smaller, and the zombies that you can control weren't nearly 
as interesting as the zombies from the original Left 4 Dead. Now, it very well could be that the beta was not a fully featured version of the game. They didn't want to give everything out for free during the summertime, and it was just supposed to be a taste of what the game has. I don't know. <clears throat> but personally, I was not blown away by the versus mode. I thought it was just okay. Then I did actually get a chance to jump into the story mode for about an hour. They finally fixed the servers, and it was it was getting good. Let me put it that way. I played through like one or two stages. It was actually getting good. There was a giant zombie boss to fight that was actually quite interesting. Um, very unique. It wasn't like anything from the original Left 4 Dead, and I was actually starting to enjoy it. But then I really ran out of time to play it, and I really never went back to it. Um, so from what I saw... The cooperative campaign seemed fun, but the versus mode didn't seem as good as the original game, okay? Now, that's just from, like, three hours of gameplay, you know? that Very well, this full-fledged version of the game could be different. But let me tell you guys something. Quite frankly, <clears throat> if this game were not on Game Pass, I don't know if I'd be playing it today. Because, basically, it's a game that hasn't proven itself. You know what I mean? Like, the original Left 4 Dead blew people away it was something unique it was something different it was something that was refreshing and actually addicting to the point where you wanted to keep playing it over and over and over you got hooked on the formula and you wanted to keep going in regards to back for blood uh that's kind of untested and unproven you know what i mean is this going to be as good as the original left for dead hey in 2021 could a game like this even be a hook to keep playing you know what i'm saying like times have changed Games have evolved over the last decade. So maybe a game like this just doesn't <clears throat> retain that interest, right? But as a Game Pass game, a game that you get if you're already a Game Pass subscriber, it definitely could find some success. The way I would say it is, I would definitely think that at the very least, for the next month or two, people will be playing this game under Game Pass, and therefore it'll be easy to find co-op partners, It'll be easy to jump in and out of the campaigns. You see? But if someone were to, like, want to buy this outright right now, I would be skeptical. I'd be like, wait, let's see. Let's play it and let's see what it is. And I'll tell you, once I play it a few times, if I really feel like this is a, something that's worth your money. Because, let's be honest, this is the hardcore gaming season, man, right? We're in the midst of the busiest gaming season of the year. There's so many games coming out. I mean, currently, I'm juggling Far Cry 6, Lost Judgment, Alan Wake Remastered, Super Monkey Ball, Banana Mania, right? <laughs> I'm juggling all those games right now. And now I'm starting up a new one. I was like, damn, <clears throat> with all these great games out, do you really want to consistently still be juggling all this stuff, right? Uh, hooey. Now here's the thing. It is, it is Halloween month. You would think if people were to jump into the zombie craziness, they would do it this month. But I think people are a lot more reserved and skeptical. <clears throat> about dropping money on a game like this than they were, say, 10 years ago for Left 4 Dead. I mean, there's just so many of ga games that have come out that have been like this. That, and there's so many, so many options. There's so many games now you can play cooperative survival shooter and stuff with your friends. I mean, you got so many. I mean, think about it. There's Ghost Recon games. There's Destiny. There's the zombie co-op in Call of Duty that, like I said, took over the reins for Left 4 Dead after Left 4 Dead 2. Um... And that's just three of the biggest ones. There's so many games like this, right? So, today, firsthand, we're going to see together what the game is all about. Now, from all reports, the game can be played solo, offline, without any multiplayer component at all. Or, it can be played online with, with co-op. Now, the difference is, if you play solo, supposedly, all of the stuff that you're supposed to earn in-game gets unlocked automatically. Okay, so you don't actually have to incrementally earn anything if you play it solo offline. But when you do that, you lock all of the progression and achievements in the game. So you basically don't earn anything for playing it. You don't feel like you're getting very far if you're playing it solo. You see what I'm saying? If you play this game cooperatively online, now you can earn the achievements. You can unlock the incremental upgrade points with the, with the cards and everything. And it feels much more like an experience that you're earning as opposed to just jumping in and everything's there for you at the get-go you see so i would argue it makes more sense to play online co-op except there's a couple factors there number one not everyone has great internet 
and trying to play a game like this when your internet's kind of wonky, well, you might not have a very good experience, right? That's number one. Number two, you're you're relying on randoms, right? Unless you have a team of, of friends who all have bought this game or all have Game Pass and got the game under it and can team up and have a lobby set up where you can all join, you're basically relying on random people across the internet to save your own ass, all right? Now, I can tell you I remember from a decade ago playing Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 that if you played the game in solo mode with AI, it was very, very iffy. And what I mean by that is the AI was not great. Half the time, the AI would wander off and do stupid shit, and then you get downed, and they would never come back to save you, and that was the end. So it was frustrating because if you're playing with humans, obviously the humans don't want to have to start over. They have incentive to come back and save your ass, while the AI is so dumb, it just <laughs> lets you die, okay? So if this is anything like the original Left 4 Dead a decade ago, you want to play with humans. You don't want to be playing with stupid AI that does, that does dumb stuff and gets you killed. Um... But not everyone has that option, and a lot of people probably don't want to just play with randoms online. They don't trust them, you know? Man, so I guess we'll see. We'll have to see how it goes today. Uh, I am going to be playing with randoms. I am not going to be doing the solo mode. The entirety of the time that I play this game, I'm going to be teaming up with randoms online, okay? What I'm obviously hoping is that they put protections in place to make it so that people can't just join your party. If you remember during the beta, one of the major problems was that anyone could join your party, you would ban them, but then when you came back to the lobby, they were able to join your party again. It was a huge oversight and a stupid thing that they fucked up. So let's hope that in the, this real version of the game, the, the actual full release version, they fixed it. Hopefully they have full-fledged protections in place so assholes can't just harass you online. You know what I'm saying? Let's be honest here. That's a big factor in how long I'll play the game. If I'm playing the game today and I'm struggling because assholes are just trolling me and I can't stop it, what is my incentive to play this game again? You know, I didn't pay anything for it because it's under Game Pass, and if the whole thing's just a frustrating experience, why would I ever go back to it, right? So I guess we'll see. We're going to see firsthand today exactly what kind of an experience this is. My plan is thus, okay? For the first couple of hours of the stream, I would like to check out the cooperative story slash campaign mode. That is always the meat of the game. Always was back in the day with Left 4 Dead. So let's see how far we can get in about two hours. Can we get through a big chunk of the story mode? From what I understand, much like the original Left 4 Dead, the game is broken up into several different campaigns. Okay? And so... Likely we'll be able to get through maybe one campaign, maybe two. We'll see how time permits. From what I understand... Um, you can drop in, drop out as long as you unlock the stage. Meaning, let's say I get to... Uh, the second campaign is the fourth stage. Well, that's great. Next time around, I could just resume from the fourth stage rather than have to start over from the beginning of the second campaign. Of course, that relies on you finding other people who are on the fourth stage, which could be a daunting task. Perhaps you have to start from the beginning to really get a full party, right? <clears throat> so I guess we'll see. Let's see how it goes today. I'm curious. What I'd like to do is, after my break, as you guys know, usually around 2.30 Pacific time, I go on about a 20-25 minute break. When I get back from break, what I'd then like to do is try the multiplayer for the, the last hour of the stream. See what's available in the multiplayer, what zombies are selectable, uh, what maps are playable, because it was only one map in the beta. So I'd like to see what other maps are available and stuff, okay? Hold on one second. So guys, just to, to forewarn all of you, my post-nasal drip is really bad today. I don't know why. Like, all night it was bothering me. I woke up this morning. It just will not let up. It is constant. It is bothering the shit out of me. So let me, I'm going to blow my nose, but it's just constant dripping. It's really pissing me off today. It sucks. So hold on. Ugh. What a pain in the ass. Yeah, so my apologies in advance if you hear me struggling with it today. Obviously, I don't want to. I hate it. It's just a medical condition that I have. And every once in a while, it gets worse and worse. And today, it's pretty bad. The other thing, usually, I have landscapers that come by on a Wednesday. Okay? This week, they changed it, and they're here today. 
The reason being is because tomorrow we're actually supposed to have some pretty heavy rain and inclement weather. And due to that, they wanted to come on a day when they weren't going to get soaked, which makes sense. So I'm actually happy that that's the case. So they're here today, but that means you may hear them outside. You know, I have my window open for fresh air and everything. You may hear these guys outside, uh, you know, cutting grass and doing all this yard work. Obviously, it might break the immersion <laughs> of being in a zombie apocalypse a little bit, but it is what it is, okay? It shouldn't be that big of a deal, I don't think. <clears throat> At least I hope. So, there you go. Thank you guys in advance for a nice chill stream of zombie survival. I, I, I really feel like this will be a nice throwback to what I used to do back in the day. So uh, Just jump in, jump out, co-op fun, right? Nothing super duper serious, because it's not. It's not a super serious game. It's just meant to be silly, fun, surviving in zombie hordes, and I hope that we can unlock some fun stuff today and see some cool stuff, maybe some cool boss fights and stuff. Let's see how it goes, okay? Let's see how it goes and go from there. Let's just see how it goes. Now, here's the thing. Depending on how today goes, this could very well determine the future of this game for me, okay? And what I mean by that is, if today is fun, and we have a good time today, and we're checking out different modes, and it's entertaining, and you guys are like, wow, this is great. I want to see more of this later this week. Let's see more of the campaigns. Let's see, let's see more verses and unlock more zombies and do stuff, right? Then we can, all right? But if I play this today and it sucks ass, it's so bad that we just don't want to play it again. We don't ever have to. It's on Game Pass, man. There's no, no investment for me, no skin off my back ch checking it out today. If it's bad, it's bad, right? And the other thing, like I said, if they have not put in protections for streamers to not be trolls, if I can't make a private party so idiots can't keep harassing me and shit, then we'll just fucking say, fuck this and uninstall it, right? That's bad. Obviously, 2021, things have changed from 2009 or 2008, back when this game was popular. They need to put in modernizations and improvements. If they didn't do that, then fuck this game. I don't have to play it again. And that would be a shame, I feel, because I really liked the original Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, so I hope that they did wise up and they put good stuff, new stuff in here. Um, I hope. <clears throat> okay? <clears throat> so let's see how it goes. All right, I'm very excited to check out Back for Blood today. Now, later tonight on the late stream at 6.45 p.m. Pacific time, it is the continuation of Lost Judgment. From what I can see from the last time that I played it, I believe we have now reached the end of what I can do with the side content, i.e. the school stories. <clears throat> I don't believe that I can make any more progress with them. I think that we've pretty much hit a wall. So if that's the case tonight, we'll actually be focusing in on the main story of the game. Which I have not focused in on <laughs> in like weeks. Okay? We'll probably pr pr you know have progress and go a whole chapter forward or something tonight in the story if that is the case. Which it seems like that's the case. Okay? So, yes, this should be fun today. <clears throat> I hope you guys will join me later tonight for the continuation of Lost Judgment. For those who've been enjoying the playthrough and were kind of sad that I didn't really play it for a while, it continues tonight. <clears throat> okay? I am off from streaming tomorrow, everybody. Tomorrow's my day off. So, I hope you all have a good day tomorrow, whatever it is that you do. If you end up getting caught up on all my playthroughs here on the channel, DSP Gaming On Demand, whether you do whatever, just be safe, all right? <clears throat> just be safe, have a good time, and I'll be back on Thursday. Now, what am I doing on Thursday? It actually directly depends on what happens today. Because if today I have a great time with Back for Blood, then I'm going to want to play it again on Thursday, and I will play it again on Thursday, if that's the case. If I play Black for Blood today and it's not so good, or we're not sold, we're not blown away, and I'm like, man, I, wanna, I, just, I don't feel like doing it again, then instead we'll do Alan Wake Remastered. And we're actually in a really interesting part of the story uh, <clears throat> of Alan Wake Remastered. You wake up inside of a mental institution being told by a doctor, everything you've seen up to now is a hallucination. You lost your mind because your wife died in a horrendous accident. And now you're trying to cope with it by creating all these visions and demons in your head. They're not real. And I'm trying to help you, you know, get back to your sanity. An interesting twist on the plot, for sure, after, you know, nine hours of trying to survive and then being told it was all in your head. So, Thursday will either be more Back for Blood and more Alan Wake. 
Thursday night will be more Lost Judgment. So double streams of Lost Judgment back to back. Okay? Pretty good. Then on Friday, whatever I did not do on Thursday will be on Friday. So it will either be Alan Wake or more Back for Blood, depending on what I didn't do on Thursday. And then Friday night is my weekly late night session of throwback Street Fighter fun. Two hours of old school Street Fighter combat. On Saturday, it's the continuation of Far Cry 6, which I'm really enjoying and I can't wait to play more of because it seems like we're coming to the culmination of the plot line in this first, you know, island area that we've been in. And I think once we finish up the base plot line there, then we can move on to the other two island areas and open those up a bit as well. Okay? Um, then, Saturday night will be Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. Holy crap, what a game this is. Last night, we cleared about a whole world out. Some of these stages are insanely challenging. It's still fun, but man, it takes a lot out of me. I played it for two hours last night. By the end of the stream, I was completely drained trying to play this game. It really tuckered me out because some of these stages were goddamn so goddamn challenging, right? <clears throat> so, that's Saturday night. Then Sunday, will likely be either more Back for Blood or Alan Wake. And basically, we'll continue through with this pattern a balance between back for blood alan wake and far cry 6 on the main streams while the night streams will be balanced between lost judgment and super bunky mall banana mania for the week okay now next week guys i have an extra long week listen to this i will be here thursday friday saturday sunday monday tuesday wednesday i will be here seven straight days of streaming that means there will be tremendous progress in a lot of the games that I'm playing. We're going to have a lot of fun together. Okay? Now, I will be off on Thursday of next week. Okay? When I return that Friday, which would be the 22nd of October, it is our next major new release of October, the Dark Pictures Anthology, House of Ashes. Now, I am excited for this because last year we played Little Hope, their last game. It was exceptionally good. <clears throat> like, I really enjoyed it. So now I'm really excited to play the next one. I hope it lives up to the expectations that they built up from last year's Little Hope. Okay? So there you go. That's basically the rough schedule for the next week or two. I hope that sounds good to all of you. A good balance of all the new releases and good stuff going on. Okay, guys? Now, in, in addition to all of that going on, all of the Halloween festivities are now in full swing. So allow me to explain all the Halloween festivities so you know how to participate in them. Okay? First of all, vote on the games you want to see in the upcoming Halloween Marathon event. The polls are open. There are two of them. All right? Each poll has five games in it. Those polls can be found right here on DSP Gaming on the main channel page under the community tab. The, you know, please vote right now. Over a thousand people have voted on each poll, which is outstanding. Those polls are going to be open, for, you know, for about a week for people to vote on. Now, the way it works is thus. There's those two polls, but there's also a members-only poll also posted there that only members can see. And if you're a channel member, of which there's now over 270, uh, you're in luck because you have the ability to pick one of the games directly that will be played in the marathon event. You don't have to compete with the other thousand plus people voting. You actually just get to pick amongst yourselves, which is really awesome. <clears throat> so if you're a channel member, please vote. If you're not a channel member, also please vote. Just vote, okay? Um, the way it works is there will be four games guaranteed to be played during the marathon event. Because the way it works is each game I want to play about an hour, if not an hour and a half. Plus, we need time for the intro, and we need time for the hour-long episode of Feasting with the King that will take place that day, which we'll talk about in a moment, you know. So, with all that taken up, you know, that's basically the, the entirety of the, the the marathon, you know, anywhere from four to six hours of gameplay, plus the Feasting with the King, plus the pre-stream, plus some breaks, etc. Okay? So, please vote. The more votes I get, the better the event will be for sure. So please vote. I can't wait to see what games you guys pick. In addition to that, the poll for the Halloween costume that I will wear during the event is also live. And what I've done is provided you with four different categories of costume you can vote on. The categories are as follows. Comic books. Pop culture. 
fantasy or Phil's choice. All right? Please vote on the category of costume you would like to see. All right? As your interactions, your input is vital to the success of the upcoming event. So I hope that you guys will. Okay? Good stuff. Very nice. I hope you guys vote and thank you in advance to anyone who does. Um, now, the other thing that will happen the week before Halloween is that you guys will be able to vote on a type of cuisine that I'll be trying for the upcoming episode of Feasting with the King. For those who don't know, Feasting with the King is a new show I started this year. Unlike my old show, DSP Tries It, <clears throat> this show is a full-fledged meal, hour-long usually, where I sit down and I try a cuisine that usually I wouldn't eat. Like, for example, Indian food, where I sat down and I had both goat curry as well as a chili tandoori chicken dish. Never had I had either of those before. I tried them live and told you guys what I thought about them. Okay? And uh, it was pretty fun, let me tell you. It's a really cool show. So this time around, I'm thinking various cuisines such as Filipino, Thai, and Mexican. And I may add in even a fourth for you guys to vote on what kind of cuisine for me to try during the Halloween event. Okay? So that's going to be coming up. That's not live yet. Okay? I want you guys to, to vote on games and vote on the Halloween costume first. Obviously, those are things I need to set up first because the food I can order the day of, but those other things I need to get set up ahead of time. Okay? So, let's see what happens. Um, and, uh, I can't wait to see your choices. Alright? Thank you in advance. And then what will happen is that day of, based on what you guys voted for, for the cuisine, the day of the Halloween event on Prestream, we'll actually order live. We'll order from, you know, one of the restaurants and get the food delivered and, and do a live episode, which will be really exciting. Very nice. Okay. So that's the deal. That's what's going on, man, in the month of October. By the way, you guys may have noticed some new things around here. We got new Prestream artwork added to the rotation, which is excellent. Thank you to the people who submitted that. Also, we got new remixes. Added to the music that I've been playing on the pre-streams of the break. I'll be honest, those aren't really new. What they are, they're remixes that just existed for the longest time, but they've been newly discovered and added to the rotation, which is awesome. It's good to have new music, new artwork. It makes everything feel fresh and different around here. I like that. So, if you are interested in submitting some content for the streams, I have open submissions. You could always send something to me, darksidephilahotmail.com. I'll give it a look. And uh, if I like it, if I feel it's up to the quality of the streams, I'll add it. I, I really appreciate anyone who submits fan art or submits uh, music or whatever uh, and adding it to the rotation to make things look awesome, right? Pretty cool. Very nice. By the way, if you're interested in the playlist of music that I play here on the streams, if you type exclamation point playlist into the stream chat, There'll be a link that will pop up. If you click on that, it'll take you to the playlist of music that I use during the breaks and everything. And newly, I newly added a bunch of the new music to that playlist that was not there previously. <clears throat> so, good stuff, okay? All right. Um, right. I'm just trying to think if outside of all that, if there's anything else really to bring up or if we can jump into gratuitous plugs and shout-outs and the like, right? Um... I think we pretty much covered all the important stuff for today. <clears throat> Again, I'm really sorry about my post-nasal drift. This sucks. I really hope that it calms down and dries up because this is, this is terrible. Having it be this heavy and there's nothing I could do about it. It's just a bad day for it. <clears throat> Ugh. Disgusting. <clears throat> oh, man. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, excuse me, hopefully that helped. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for watching my content. Thank you for supporting my content. Oh my 
god. Oh my god. <clears throat> I can't stop laughing now. Oh yeah. <clears throat> this stupid shit, man. Oh. <clears throat> what is it? I got a frog in my throat. It's on the right hand side of my throat, deep down. I can't clear it out because the post nasal drip's been going all night. So it's stuck in there, it's lodged in there now, and I can't clear it out. <clears throat> so as I'm sitting here trying to talk to you guys, it's bothering me. Jesus. <laughs> the COX, it sounds like you're turning into a zombie. Ooh, ah, ooh, 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 brains. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Very nice. Let's continue. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for 13 awesome years of support. I'm an independent content creator. What that means is that I don't have any sponsorships or partnerships and no support pretty much from anyone but you guys. I am independent. When I stream, I can be honest with you guys and upfront about everything that I'm experiencing in a game. I don't have to sugarcoat anything. I don't have to kiss butt. I also don't have to overemphasize if the game is bad. Reason being is thus. I don't have to worry about ins uh, pissing off a sponsor <clears throat> or saying the wrong thing and losing money because of it, all right? I am an independent, and even though that means I don't get those nice fancy behind-the-scenes contracts and paychecks like a lot of people who do this for a living, I get to be honest with all of you. And you guys have told me over the years this is what you like about me, that I'm an honest, upfront guy, that I'm transparent when it comes to my opinions on games and what I think, you know that when you're watching me play a game, you're getting the real fill and the real opinions on what I'm doing. It's not me doing a paid advertisement to make money, you see. <clears throat> so all that being said, because of that, you guys support the streams to keep that going. You realize there's different kinds of content creators out there. And you, you like the fact that I'm different from them. I'm not just a shill. I'm here to be honest with you and let you know truly if you're going to like a game or not that I'm playing, right? So many people have told me over the past couple of months in particular, games like Hades and stuff like that, that they really tried out games as a result of me playing them, and they're really happy that they did, that watching my streams broadens their horizons for the kind of games that they play. That's awesome, and I'm really happy about that <clears throat> because that means that I'm doing you a service, right? I mean, sure, hanging out with me every day is fun. And sure, having a chill social experience is also cool. But getting a service out of it as well, finding out if this is a game you're interested in playing, right? This all adds up to being something that's really awesome, and that's really what I strive for on my streams, okay? But that being said, because I don't have those sponsorships or partnerships, I rely on you guys and your crowdfunding efforts to keep going. So thank you so much to those who do keep stuff going around here. I really, really appreciate it, okay? <clears throat> now... If you like the stream and the content that I put out, there are many ways that you can support it. First of all, you can become a channel member here on the channel. When you become a channel member and you join the channel, you get many benefits. First of all, you get a highlighted name in the stream chat. Second, you get a cool chat crown badge to show how long you've been a supporter. Third, you get to access to all of my emotes on the channel. There's currently 20 and growing. Fourth, you don't have to abide by the slow mode rules of the chat. You can talk as much as you want. And then on top of all of that, you will get limited monthly benefits based on what's going on at the time. For example, as I've already mentioned, this month, you get to exclusively nominate and then vote on games for the upcoming Halloween event, and the members will actually directly choose a game that will be played during the Halloween marathon. You see? Last month, members got exclusive access to Ask the King, my bi-monthly Q&A show. They got to ask questions on the show that got answered. Tons of members got, got questions answered, right? So, that was all amazing, and I hope that you guys will consider becoming a member if you're not. We actually have large-scale rewards in place for hitting membership milestones. If we hit 325 consecutive members this month, what we're going to be doing is a special late-night stream where we go on Amazon together, and we order a new hat for the rotation on my streams that I will then wear on the streams, okay? And we had 350 members this month. It's the return of the Viewer's Choice playthrough event where you guys will nominate and vote on a game that will be a full-on playthrough here on my streams over the course of the next few months, okay? 
So, really awesome benefits to being a member of the channel. I hope you will consider if you're not, okay? You could also do what's called a super chat or super sticker. These are ways that you can contribute to the channel where you get highlighted messages in the stream chat as a way of immediately saying thanks for the contribution. And I appreciate <clears throat> membership, super chats, and super stickers a lot. I shout them out whenever I get a chance because I'm so grateful that you guys will contribute to the streams to keep it going. But in addition, those are ways to help this channel in the long term. Okay? That's long term support that keeps this channel going, much like they used to have subscriptions and cheers back on Twitch. It's the memberships and the super chats and the super stickers that keep the channel going long term behind the scenes here on YouTube. Now, if you want to support my streams in the best way possible, in the strongest way possible, then I'm going to ask that you would tip me today on the stream. And here's why. When you send me a tip, <clears throat> two things happen. First of all, tips I get immediately. I can use that for something very important like paying a bill, buying a game, or, or paying for, for the cost of like things like internet on the stream, paying back taxes. In particular today, all tips that I raise today go towards my day off tomorrow. Grocery shopping, I actually have to fill the car with gas tomorrow, um, a meal with my wife on the day off, stuff like that, okay? That's where the tips go today. So, thank you in advance to anyone who tips me today because you're basically directly aiding me and having a good day off tomorrow. But in addition to that, when you tip me, I get more of a cut of a tip than any other kind of contribution. The truth of the matter is, no matter how you contribute to someone online, there's always a middleman who takes a cut, okay? In particular, when you're talking about tips... The amount of a cut that's taken out of a tip is less than what's taken out of the other methods of contribution. So tipping does help me more than the other methods, plus I get the help immediately, you see. Now, because tips are so directly supportive, I have special reward tiers set up to, to say thank you for tipping me. If we raise $50 in tips on today's stream, I'll put on my pair of gunner glasses. If we raise $100 in tips today, I will put on a hat of your choice. Of course, since this is a new release that definitely will make use of surround sound, I'm going to be wearing headphones today, so that means the, the three hats eligible will be hats I could wear under the headphones. If we raise $150 in tips, which is the full goal for the stream, I'll put on a vest of your choice. Today, the vest will include the red, the platinum, the camo, and the denim. Those are the four vests eligible for today, okay? <clears throat> so... Thank you in advance to anyone who contributes in any way to the stream. I will give you a shout out when I get a chance. But in particular, to anyone who goes out of their way to tip me because that is the most supportive way to, to back up the stream and, and help me out. Thank you in advance. Okay? Fair enough? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get the shout outs for those who have contributed. Okay? First off, allow me to refresh... Those who contributed through YouTube here and do a couple shout-outs. We started off with Indead, who did a $2 super chat and said, Extended to see, excited to see what you're going to say about the game. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, the beta, I wasn't sold on it. I didn't hate it, but I didn't really like it either. It was just kind of there. So I'm curious now with the full version of the game, with all the story campaigns in place, with the full multiplayer and all the options and maps in place, will it be a much better experience, right? We're going to find out together. Very nice. Tempted by the Fruit of Jasper. I don't know what the hell this name's coming from. Did a $5 super chat. And it said, would I ever have Jasper stuffed and bring him out as a Halloween decoration? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why me? All right. Thank you so much for that super chat. I really appreciate it. Um, let's get that up on the leaderboard. By the way, there, again, there's absolutely no way I'm putting that fucking name on the leaderboard. So, tempted by the fruit of Jasper. There you go. <clears throat> Amazing. Oh, my God. Okay. Let's continue, shall we? <laughs> let's push forward positively. I just received a $10 super chat. From Mario Brothers, who says, No, thank you for an awesome 13 plus years of awesome content. You helped me with my depression growing up as a teen, and now that I'm in my 20s, your content brightens my day. My friends even like watching you. Thank you. 
to Mario Brothers. You know, after all those decades of you guys fighting mutant turtles and huge mushrooms, it really it brightens my day to know that what I do on a daily basis brightens your day. So thank you, Mario Brothers, for your support. In all seriousness, thank you to whoever Mario Brothers really is for that nice message. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <clears throat> okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to tips. Let's do shout-outs for people who've tipped today. We actually start off today with Anso Kamaru, who tipped me a dollar fifty. Says, remember when you played Assassin's Creed Odyssey and it wouldn't ever end? Tales of Arise is doing that to me. I'm 50 hours in. I thought I was in the final area. Then the game laughs in my face as I'm only halfway through. It's rough to stick to a game when it drags. Yeah, you know, I will. admittedly, I'll say this. I love Japanese RPGs. I absolutely do. I grew up with them, right? Like, <clears throat> playing games such as Final Fantasy 2 and 3, which, of course, were really 4 and 6. Um, Chrono Trigger, Earthbound. Later on, I played games like Wild Arms and Suikoden on the PlayStation. <clears throat> I love those kind of games. However, back then, the games were much shorter. You know, they just were. Today, it seems like a lot of these JRPGs go for length over... I don't even know if I want to say quality, but maybe entertainment factor. Like, when you end up having a game that's 80 plus hours long, right... At some point, you're going to say, man, I'm getting bored. I would argue the only RPG that I played in the past many years where it was long but I didn't get bored was probably Dragon Quest XI because that game has a second quest that's much more challenging and difficult than the first. But during that quest, you're getting all the answers to the unanswered questions you had from the first half of the game, the first quest. And so it actually feels rewarding. To kind of like go through this extra challenging second half of the game. But yeah, it seems to me like in this modern era of JRPGs, a lot of them are going for length over quality. And I hear this all the time, that the games just drag on and end up being such a time sink. That's why, if you haven't noticed, I don't really play that many of them, you know? If I am going to play one, I'll play one like Lost Judgment or Yakuza, where it's kind of a unique experience. As opposed to, oh, the, the typical anime-ish, grindy style... JRPG. In fact, I've skipped a ton of those recently, right? <clears throat> so there you go. Um, let's continue here. Uh, Chicken Nugget to me four dollars twenty cents and says, "Will you be checking out the Guardians of the Galaxy game this month?" Yes. Here's the thing: the Guardians of the Galaxy game, the gameplay doesn't look very good. I'm gonna be honest. From what we saw in all of the promotional stuff for the game, the gameplay itself just kind of looks kind of meh. But the story and the writing is very on par with the comic books and movies. In which case, I feel like the the game itself may be worth playing just for the story alone. Okay? So right now, I am leaning towards checking it out because the story looks so good. Okay, now. If we end up getting more information on the game within like the next week or two and the, all the gameplay is terrible, then maybe I won't. But right now, I am leaning towards playing the game. Okay, fair enough. Thank you, Chicken Nugget, for the big tip. Chocoboco to me a dollar fifty. Says for a sec, I thought you were turning, turning to the boomer when you were clearing your throat earlier. I love that class, the boomer class in Left for Dead. <laughs> yes, and again, I apologize, guys. You know, really bad post nasal drip today. I'm trying to deal with it. Usually, what happens is thus: even when it's bad. Within a few hours of me streaming, it clears up. <clears throat> it's just something that naturally happens during the course of the day. So I hope it gets better over the course of the stream. And I apologize again. I know it's disgusting. I, I hate it. I don't want to deal with it fucking either. It's fucking annoying, man. Snow Carl took the dollar fifty. He says, I found out YouTube will take a third or actually 30% out of all Super Chats. I never realized it was that much. And do you think it's excessive and frankly greedy? Uh, I, why would they take 30% of their creator's money when PayPal is 1%? Well, here's the thing. That's actually not true, okay? First of all, it is true, I believe, that the Super Chat is 30%. I think that's correct. I think that's accurate. But what you got to realize is that that's actually way less than Twitch. On Twitch, Twitch took 50% of a lot of contributions. 50%. In regards to cheering, okay, 
you would get all the bits that were cheered at you, but the bits cost ridiculous amounts of money. So I'll give you an example here. You would buy a thousand bits, okay? But it would cost you like seventeen, eighteen dollars to buy a thousand bits. But those bits would go to a creator and they would not be that much. In fact, I would tell you X now, because I'm not in a contract with Twitch anymore, I can say whatever the fuck I want. Those 1,000 bits would be the equivalent of $10 for the creator. So can you imagine that? You're paying $18 for the bits. You're sending them to a, a content creator. Here you go. Oh, they got $10. So where'd the $8 go? Twitch pocketed it. Twitch was making ridiculous money on Cheers. Absolutely huge amounts of money. The Super Chats on YouTube are not that bad. Trust me. It's actually... If you, super Chatting does directly support a creator way more than cheering did on Twitch. They take ginormous cuts of everything over there. It's it's nuts. They take 50% of every every uh sub. A half. That's crazy. They're taking a ridiculous amount of money. <clears throat> now, in regards to tips, okay? In regards to tips, it's different depending on you. It's different depending on the size of the tip. It's very different. The way that it goes is there's a flat fee plus a transactional fee based on where you live. It's very odd. Like, I've seen people do tips and it takes a different cut depending on where they live, what denomination of funds they're sending, and the size of the tip. From what I'm to understand, the larger the tip, the less the transactional fee that they take. I don't know. It's very confusing. But... Overall, yes, there's less of a fee taken out of a tip than there is out of a, another contribution method. That's just, oh, that's always been the case. Even when I was on Twitch, always tipping was more of that a tip that you send goes to the content creator than other methods of, of support. By the way, as I've said, I definitely appreciate those who are channel members and who do super chats and super stickers. Here's why. That is consistent behind the scenes income that grows the channel and has a base level of income for me, so I know what I'm making to pay the big things around here, like my mortgage and stuff. You know what I mean? Um, that's the kind of stuff that behind the scenes on Twitch as well. The subs and the cheers was very important. All right? So by no means am I saying, oh, by the way, don't ever do a membership or a super chat or a super sticker. By all means, if that's the way that you feel is the best way for you to contribute and you can't tip, go ahead. But what I'm saying is tips definitely helped me a lot. Especially in the short-term stuff. Like I said, today, as many tips as I raise, that'll help me for my day off tomorrow. That's my money for tomorrow, man. You know? Okay. Uh, Chicken Man tipped me $1.50 and says, G4 TV channel relaunches on November 16th, but only on Verizon, Fios, Cox, and Xfinity TV. No other providers are going to get it, so will it fail again? Seems like they have most of the old hosts back. The same shows like Attack of the Show and X-Play. You are Lifetime G4 TV star. Huh? I don't understand what that last part meant. Um, here's the thing. I don't know anything about it. I never watched it. Seriously. I never watched G4. Never. I think that some of the few things I ever saw on the channel, like a million years ago, they had a show where essentially it was people playing the games. With no commentary, no face cam. It was just someone playing through a game. I remember watching someone playing like one of the Hitmans. That was the show. And I, I, I guess it's a good way to maybe get a little bit of gameplay exposure to a franchise or whatever. But <clears throat> I never watched any of the popular shows on there at all. So I don't know if they were good, if they were bad. I don't know if them bringing back the stuff is good or bad. I have no idea. I don't even have TV. I don't. I have no TV. The, uh, you know, I have no access to live shows. So I wouldn't even watch it. <laughs> now, Chicken Man just did another super chat. Says you were on Attack of the Show at E3. I was. I know that that John Rambo and I basically got into the background of a shot. Um, at E3 2012, we were in the background of one of the shots that they were doing. We kind of walked through or whatever. Um, and then during the presentation of Watch Dogs, the very first one, many years ago, we were there in the room getting a screening of the game and then they came in and they did this reward presentation where they said this is the best of show of E3 2012 and they got presented an award and stuff 
Okay. So, that, I mean, yeah, we were on, like, very temporarily, we were in, a, like, one or two shots of the show. You guys have heard my take on E3 over the years. You know my, th <laughs> you know my feeling about E3 having be been there. I'm basically the one person who will tell it like it is and tell you E3 is a fucking waste of time. A huge waste of time and money. You won't even get any information out of E3 being there in person that you wouldn't get on the internet. It's just a huge PR thing that means absolutely nothing. Okay. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is about it for my pre-stream. I think I've covered all the shout-outs. All right. Answered all the questions. Now, Kevin has been asking a question the entire time. Oh, here we go. Kevin just did a super chat. He says, Super Monkey Ball when? The next Super Monkey Ball stream will be... Let me think about this. We got Lost Judgment today and Lost Judgment on Thursday. And then Street Fighter Friday. So Super Monkey Ball continues Saturday night. And then it will also be Monday night. And then likely it'll also be Wednesday night. Like, there's going to be a lot of Super Monkey Ball this week. I mean, depending on how much progress I make, maybe we'll even beat it. I don't know. Um... I guess it really depends on how well I do. Last night, I beat basically a world, right? One whole world. If I can keep it that pace and I do one whole world every time I play it, maybe I can beat it with, you know, three, four streams, <clears throat> right? I guess we'll see. <laughs> but tonight is Lost Judgment, which I also know, Kevin, you've been waiting for. You really like Lost Judgment, and that's coming back tonight. I'm excited. Actual story progression. Holy shit, can you believe there's story in the game? I didn't know. <laughs> We're going to have some tonight. Okay? All right. Guys, anything else? Any last-minute questions? Any concerns? Anything to talk about before we go on break? Because I'm going to go on a brief break to use the restroom. And then when I come back, we start off with Back for Blood and we see what it's all about. Anything? Or shall we just go on break? <laughs> I have no idea what snood is, so no, I guess I've never played it. Burgers or chicken sandwiches? I, when I was younger, I liked burgers more. Now I think I like chicken sandwiches more. I don't know what a Vanillaware game is. I'm doing well today, Daedalus, except for the post-nasal drip. I'm doing well. If the post-nasal drip would stop, I'd actually be in a very good mood. I just need it to stop. It's really disgusting. <clears throat> LP10111 to the dollar fifty says you have Super Monkey Ball one and two to com complete. It's a different mode to the main game. So there's what you're saying is there's more content. I figured as much, but what I'm saying is, for the intents of my playthrough, I want to beat. My keyboard just died. I want to beat the main stages in the main campaign. That's what I'm talking about when I say, oh, I've got this much left in the game or whatever. Absolutely, I'm aware. There's going to be more content for me to check out if I want to keep going, but I'm just talking about the main stuff. In the main story of the game, so. Okay? Anything else? Are we good? I guess we're good. Alright, guys, let's take a break. I gotta use the bathroom anyway. Let's take a break. I'll be back in a few. You guys, I recommend you grab a drink or a snack. Use the restroom yourselves. And then when I come back, it's time. We're gonna check out the campaign online co-op of Back for Blood. Let's see how it goes. Hopefully it's fun like Left for Dead was and we'll go from there. Alright guys, thanks. I'll see you in a bit. This is for the Gobots, the Rock Lords, the Cycle Knots, and all the other third rate transforming robots that never got their due. Ah! Here we go. Oh! Go, go, go! Oh! Diddy's air metal, baby! Platformer! Woo! Platformer! Yeah! Platforming! Flat, platforming! Platformer! Woo! Platformer! Come on! Monkeys will jump across the pipes and the wings! Platformer! Oh shit, 
Section 8 again into the wide attack. Look at that attack. Oh, oh, ooh. Two barrel roll. Expert stun charge attack. Nice and extra wide. Yeah, he's got some pretty good combo. Get the fuck out of here. Platformer. Woo! Platformer. Hey. Platforming. Plat, platforming. What a twist! DJ Circus, son! A beast melting solo on top of a third for the ship! up here. There's giant rat scorpions. I gotta get the fuck out of here. Look how many of them there fucking are. What is this shit? How can I possibly kill all of these? I need dynamite. Company. Moon is my fucking hero. Ooh, 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 ooh. Whoa, we got a headshot on it. Ooh, 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 ooh. He sniped the shit out of all the robots in the room. Ooh, 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 ooh. Whoa, we got a headshot on it. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's what I call a headshot. We just figured out that it's Genie May. Question is, where the fuck is Jeannie May? She hasn't been here all day. Wonder where she is. Cause it's Jeannie May, and Jeannie May is MIA. You can't fucking find her. Oh, here she is, finally! Moon's gonna be ecstatic. Ooh, 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 ooh! Whoa! We got a headshot on it! Ooh, 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 ooh! He sniped the shit out of all the robots in the room! Ooh, 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 ooh! Whoa! We got a headshot on it! Ooh, 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 ooh! That's what I call a headshot. Come with me if you want to live. And then blow her brains out. That's what I'm talking about, sweet revenge. Come with me, there's something you should see in front of the dinosaur. Yeah, come on, bitch. She's fucked. Dude, you ain't get what's coming to you, you fucking slut. Yeah! Yeah! Sound effects. Ooh, 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 ooh. Whoa, we got a headshot on it. Ooh, 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 ooh. He sniped the shit out of all the robots in the room. Ooh, 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 ooh. Whoa, we got a headshot on it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Everything he says is so 
Can't believe that you thought this was a song. Can't believe that you thought this was a song. All I did was rhyme all along. Can't believe that you thought this was a song. All I did was rhyme all along. All I did, all I did, all I did was rhyme all along. All I did, all I did, all I did was rhyme all along.
All right, guys. I'm back. It's time to get started here. Let's actually uh, get everything set up. I think I need to turn on my lamp because it has gotten very cloudy and dark outside. <laughs> I think there actually might be some rain today, which is funny because they the reason the landscapers came today is because they wanted to avoid rain. Well, it looks like it might rain today. Um, I'm going to go turn on my lamp on low so at least there's some better lighting in here. All right. Hope you guys had a good break. I hope you're ready. Let's jump into Back for Blood. Let's boot her up. Let's see uh, what's available here from the start. Like I said, we'll probably have to do some tweaking of the settings to make sure that people can't fuck with me and stuff. But uh, let's get it going. Let me get my headphones on here. Back for Blood. Why do I? Why is it recording? Let me guess. I didn't stop the pre-stream. I didn't. Ha, ha, ha. Oops, that's a long pre-stream. I guess I'll stop recording it now. <laughs> 